through each and every one of our lives, we learn to speak multiple languages. We start with English or whatever is your first language. Uh, some of us learn a second language growing up. Uh, and throughout our lives, whether we know it or not, we learn many different other languages along the way. So the way you talk to your mom is not going to be the same way you talk to your boss or to your best friend. Carolina Rivera Pusbed has spoken several languages throughout her life. She first learned English and eventually she learned Spanish, but she also speaks the language of a daughter, of a mother, of a wife, of a sister, of a teacher, of a friend. Carolina Pusbed was born on April 29, 1985, in Chicago, Illinois, and she spent her first 10 years of living in Nassau, Bahamas. Um, and then when she was 10, she moved to Cranbrook Pines, Florida. And she's lived in several other places in Florida, but this is the one she mentioned to me. Uh, Plastin has been obsessed with music all her life. That's what she originally wanted to do. She was very good at it. She was in all sorts of competitions growing up. She uh, won superior ratings in districts, which is a choral competition, uh, one I almost made it to uh, when I was in chorus. I unfortunately only made it to All City back when that was my passion. Uh, so one of the things that I love about her is that uh, she originally wanted to do music and then she wanted to do Spanish. <coughs> I originally wanted to do music and then I wanted to do Spanish. When she was a senior in high school, around 17 years old, she auditioned for a scholarship at the University of South Florida. Uh, and she got it. Uh, from what I could tell, it was a pretty expensive scholarship. She also won a spot in one of the most prestigious and elite choir groups at South Florida. Um, but unfortunately, she started having health issues, uh, ones that kept her from being able to keep up her voice. Uh, not to mention that uh, the fact that she's a, she got a little lazy in her first year of college, as most of us do. Um, and she never learned any instruments that would, other instruments that would help her still pr pursue her career in music. And eventually she decided to leave the field of music uh, and pursue her family with her husband and her kid that she had at 19 years old. While studying at University of South Florida, she met her husband, Brian, at a party at her neighbor's house, um, and they pretty much instantly fell in love. They got married in 2004 and had their first son the same year. Uh, Brian was deployed about four out of the eight first years of their marriage, uh, causing their marriage to get a little rocky, but they persevered through it, and she said that she wouldn't be where she is without him, she wouldn't be who she is without him. She had her first son, Andres, in 2004, and her second son, Alejandro, in 2006. And both of them have been diagnosed with autism. Andres is her oldest, oh, sorry. <laughs> autism is a brain disorder that often makes it hard to communicate with others, and it, it deals with different areas in the brain that haven't developed fully or just fail to act the way a normal brain would. Andres, the older one, is a high-functioning autistic child, which means he can do most things. He just has a hard time realizing uh, social skills and how to act appropriately. He's only around like 13 years old, so he still has trouble with it, not only as a 13-year-old boy, but a 13-year-old boy with autism. Her younger son, Alejandro, uh, is a nonverbal autistic, which means he can't really talk. He barely makes a sound. Uh, about a third of people on the autism spectrum are nonverbal, and it, it's really difficult on the parents. And he's 10 years old and still wears diapers and has the functionality of a 15-month-old kid. Uh, and he'll probably never be able to be independent on his own. She'll probably have to take care of him for the rest of his, for the rest of his life. Having autistic children was very difficult for her, especially since she had no experience with autism before, and, but 
she learned to grow, grow, and uh, you know, prospered in it and became the mother she needed to be for her children. And she wouldn't have it any other way. It's taught her to have infinite amounts of <coughs> patience, which has been great for her teaching career. And it's made her grateful for the small things she does have. Uh, being a mother has taught her to look at every student as someone else's child and not just a kid in her class. It makes it so that she's able to deal with them a little bit more with more patience and be able to help them out when they're acting out. Uh, in, an, in the inter email interview, she said, it's funny you can, it's funny you can tell when a teacher is really into what she does because she will say, my kids, and you're never sure whether she's talking about her students or her own children. And I've seen her do that before, and I have had to be like, are you talking about your kids or your students? Um, it's hard for her to separate her parenting life from her teaching life. It, it comes hand in hand almost. And it's just hard for her not to get too involved when dealing with a problematic student. It's, you know, it, it's in her nature. Even though Senor Pastel grew up in a Hispanic household, she never had to speak Spanish because her parents were very fluent in English. She actually didn't learn Spanish until she was in high school. When she moved to Miami and she was in the sixth grade, she was the only Hispanic girl in her grade that didn't know Spanish. She was practically the only kid in her grade that didn't know Spanish because it's Miami. She was so embarrassed that she didn't know this language like everybody else did. She found it so hard to fit in that in ninth grade she decided enough was enough. She was gonna take Spanish. And suddenly she felt a little bit of power from it. It helped her be able to talk to parts of her family she was never able to talk to before because they only speak Spanish. It, uh, she could listen into her parents' private conversations that they used to only have in Spanish. And she was, for a while, the only one in her family who could. Uh, since Spanish happened to be her second love in high school, when her love of, when her career in music didn't work out, it was the obvious route to go. And luckily for her, when she started Spanish, she said that it, it didn't feel like a chore because she knew she had to get better at it. So the fact that she had to get better at it in order to teach it made it more of a challenge, whereas in music, it became a chore because it was just something she had to keep repeatedly doing every day and all day. Um, Senora Plusted got her associate's degree at Tidewater Community College, actually, on the Virginia Beach campus, and then she got her bachelor's degree in Spanish education from K-12 at Old Dominion University, which is where I want to go after this, so it's pretty cool. <laughs> While teaching at Granby, which she started my sophomore year in 2012, she actually encountered some really tough things in her years at Granby. She always seemed to get the worst students, especially since she taught Spanish one and two, which were required, so no kid wanted to be there. Uh, she actually had someone, I'm not gonna say the expletive, but someone was yelling at her and called her a Spanish B word, and instead of getting angry or you know trying to come back she all she said to her was first off I'm Colombian not Spanish and then threw her out of class um, and my junior year of high school she was the focus of a texting scandal uh, she had a personal Instagram that was found by a bunch of male students of hers who uh, admired her looks <laughs> and tried to gain a not professional relationship with her and she wasn't having it. Um, and being the immature boys that they were, they did not like that and decided to retaliate by faking text messages of um, the more non-professional nature. Uh, they made it seem like it was from her and they showed their parents and she was almost fired for it. Luckily, she provided evidence of her telling these same students off, saying, 
this is inappropriate, you should not be doing this. And she got a slap on the wrist for using profanity in these uh, messages. But other than that, uh, she ended up on the good side of it. She did nothing happened to her, but it made the year really stressful for her. You know, thinking she might be fired for something she didn't even do. For doing the right thing, she might be punished for it. But despite all that, she still loves being a Spanish teacher. Uh, for being able to see the look in the kids' eyes when they finally get get something. And for being able to be close with a few of those students, like me or my friends, Alyssa and Matt, you know, people who really took a liking to her, and grew a friendship with her as well as a student-teacher relationship. Uh, her first year there, she started a Spanish club with my then teacher, Senor Simone, uh, which I went to, obviously. Um, my friend Alyssa actually asked me to go with her. She didn't want to go alone, because I hadn't heard about it. And I didn't want to go, but I went anyway. And it turned out Alyssa had to go home, and she couldn't text me because school had no service. So I was there alone, but I didn't even want to be there. But luckily, I really liked it, and I fell in love with it. And I ran for vice president that year, and I got it. And the next year, I moved up to president, and I was president of Spanish club until I graduated. I spent hundreds of afternoons after school with her it, for going to Spanish club meetings, for planning Spanish club events and meetings, uh, to just grading papers for her, for just visiting her. Senora Cuesta became my mentor in my junior year she told me that she decided she wanted to take me under her wing because I decided I wanted to be a Spanish teacher. And so when I'd be spending time with her, she would make sure to implement little bits of knowledge, you know, little tips like um, don't always try to be the cool teacher. You know, if you see a kid skip thing, you can't let it go. You have to report it or else they'll keep doing it. Stuff like that. You know, just little tidbits that you would think are common sense but sometimes aren't for a new teacher trying to he liked. Uh, she also gave me other types of tips on this life, on trying to get through high school, on trying to get through <coughs> her first year of college when she was still living here. She even helped me apply to jobs by being my reference on countless applications for things. And throughout my high school, I suffered from depression pretty badly. Uh, and she was there when it felt like I had nobody else. Um, there were days when I would go to her classroom to see if she needed anything, to bring papers or something, and I just end up spending two hours just, you know, venting my heart out to her about issues I had with my dad, about losing one of my best friends, which she knew. Mm -hmm. um, she knew that me and her would always go to that class together, and all of a sudden we weren't doing that anymore. Kind of thing. <coughs> I talked to her about that. I talked about to her about depression and stuff. And without her, I, I honestly believe I don't think I would be standing here today in front of you all. Uh, her and other people, but she was a big part of it. My uh, depression. Oh, sorry. Uh, my depression uh, kind of felt like it was drowning me for a good portion of my junior and senior year of high school. Um, the summer between junior and senior year, I was pretty much spending all of my time contemplating suicide. I didn't want to deal with it anymore. And she was a big part of it. Depression is a mood disorder that causes persistent feelings of sadness. And it's not always like, oh, uh, my life sucks, this is sad. Sometimes it's just sad for no reason, and you can't seem to get out of it. And throughout these years, she took the time to make sure that I was okay. Mm -hmm. Make sure I was handling it okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry. You're okay. Take a deep breath. Just take a deep breath. Um, take a moment. But she was a big part of helping me um, not commit suicide. <laughs> um, and become the person I am today who deals with my depression pretty easily. Mm -hmm. um, for as long as I remember, I've wanted to be a teacher. 
as a kid, I wanted to be a math teacher because that was the thing I was good at. As a preteen in middle school, I wanted to be a chorus teacher. And when I got to high school was when I finally decided I wanted to be a Spanish teacher, and that seemed to be the thing that stuck. Uh, in 10th grade, I realized that my passion was for Spanish, not for singing. Uh, I was in a really crappy class. My teacher was more focused on her higher up classes, so I, you know, my class was kind of left by the wayside and was filled with, I, I don't like to demean people for their age, but it was filled with a bunch of freshmen <laughs> every year, and I got to the point where I was a 16-year-old kid dealing with 14-year-old kids, which doesn't seem like a big difference, but in high school it is. Um, and I just started to hate going to class, and I started to actually dread singing when I was there. And I didn't like that at all. I didn't like that something that used to be something I did every minute of the day was suddenly something that I hated doing, which she could relate to because that was her in college. Uh, and in Spanish, I learned that I was good at it, which, you know, made me cocky. <laughs> uh, but I also just learned to love it. And she showed me so many different things, so much culture, so much just things you would never think about when you think about language. Most people, they take a Spanish class and it's their hard class of the year, it's their annoying class of the year. For me, it was mind blowing, mind opening. Uh, being able to express yourself in more than just one way, especially if that's the one way you've been expressing yourself your whole life and suddenly you have something brand new in front of you, it's, it's almost magical. Like, Spanish has become part of every part of my life. It's just overcome my life. And by the end of my 10th grade year, I did, made the decision to finally stick to Spanish and say this is what I want to do. Um, and I haven't changed my mind since, which is new for me because I was always changing my mind. Looking back on my high school years, I choose not to look back and I choose not to look back on the depression or, you know, the drama or the boys or any of the, you know, typical high school things. I choose to look back on the friendships. I choose to look back on the partnerships with my teachers, with, you know, just the great people around me. I choose to look at it as a growth experience, something that taught me not only knowledge but wisdom. Senora Plus Dead was a big part of that. Uh, and she became more than just a teacher. She became my mentor, and more importantly, she became my friend. I still keep up with her all the time, uh, even though she's moved and has been graduated. Uh, after I walked across the stage at graduation, we were supposed to keep in a straight line. You know, our principal was very firm about that. Do not. Uh, embarrass me, this is how you're supposed to do it, be professional. And uh, I guess I didn't seem to care because we were walking out and I stepped out of line and she sat out of her chair, neither of us were supposed to do that. And we just gave each other this really big, tight hug, uh, really like the cheesy scene you see in a TV show, but it was real because she was one of the biggest and best things about high school for me and she helped me get to the graduation day alive and happy and successful. And we hug each other with tears in our eyes and frogs in our throats. And um, my grandmother actually got mad because instead of waving up to get a picture, I went to hug her instead. My mom just said, it's her, te it's her favorite teacher. You need to let her have this. This is her thing. <laughs> um, and that's what I like remembering about high school or days like that, where I had someone there for me, not just another 17-year-old woman friend, but a 30-year-old woman who seemed to know how life works and who took the time to look out for me as well, just a student, but as someone she cared about. And I wouldn't have it any 